Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. I am your host, David Dodge. Today, I have special guests, Dedrick and Crystal Polite. <clears throat> welcome. How are you guys? We're great. Thanks for having us, David. Thanks. Absolutely. I want to just jump right in, right? Everybody listens to the podcast. They hear the intro. They hear the outro. We don't need to go over that again, right? Let's jump right in. So I've been following you guys on social media for quite some time. I met you both at Max's event about a year and a half ago, and I was inspired by you guys because you have not been in the game for 20 years. You've been in the game for two in the real estate side of things, but you're doing big things, and I love that. So I figured, hell, let's bring them on the show. I'm sure they're going to have tons of gold nuggets for the listeners and the viewers. Um, to learn about the speed in which you guys were able to get into the real estate business and be successful. And also some of the other things that you're doing as well. So I'm going to yield the floor to you guys. Tell us a little bit about how long you've been investing in real estate and what you are focusing on. Yeah, so we're Dedrick and Crystal Polite. Uh, we're serial entrepreneurs. We're also real estate investors. Uh, we I bought my first investment property in 2007. Uh, it was a triplex in Boston. See, I got my Boston hat. That's where we're from originally. <laughs> now in North Carolina. But, um, and then I didn't buy another property for a good 12 years. Uh, I think I looked at one of your posts on, on Instagram and showed how you had like one house for like 10 years straight. And then you started scaling a few years ago. Um, so I sat on the sideline for a while. And then I met this woman. And uh, she's a visionary. And she kind of pushed me like, hey, you always talk about this real estate investing, this wholesaling stuff. Why don't we just do it? So 2017, we got into the business and we went hard. We started getting educated, um, started taking action. And uh, we've been able to grow a portfolio, um, you know, in a very short amount of time. And we're both able to leave jobs in corporate America, making over six figures. So uh, this has been an incredible, incredible business for us. Absolutely. And that was one of the things that inspired me when I saw you guys speak was the fact that you both were able to leave those six figure jobs to be able to. Uh, get into real estate and some of your other ventures. And you know, that's, that's, the, that's the thing I think that stuck out the most. And the reason is, is most people, guys, I think you all agree, most people get into real estate for freedom. And they find that they have very little freedom because they're hustling and grinding so hard trying to make it in real estate. And the thing about real estate is it's so incredibly simple. Uh, but it's not easy, right? Those are two totally right. different things. Right. Like the business of buying and flipping properties with little to no money or using creative finance to acquire, um, even the Burr strategy, it's so simple, but people make it complicated. Um, so it's amazing. So you guys got into real estate to find the freedom and you have it, which is awesome. So, so cool. Um, so let's focus, or let's talk a little bit about what kind of, um, real estate you guys are focusing on right now. You started out a couple years ago doing wholesaling, but now you have a portfolio. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so we originally got into it from the very beginning. It was always to uh, build a rental portfolio, uh, build a massive rental portfolio to be able to pass down to our sons. Um, so that's literally always been our why from day one. It was never to um, just get into real estate. It was for freedom, like you said. Um, and to be able to change the trajectory of our family tree. So from day one, when we got into it, it was, okay, we're going to wholesale, but how can we wholesale to buy and hold? And that's the strategy that we um, dove into the most, wholesale to buy and hold. That's all we've done so far. Starting off, we wanted to literally buy everything. See, <laughs> so you guys have had the, the mindset from the yeah. get go of, I want that rent. I want that passive income. I want that cash flow. I love it. And you know, I do a lot of wholesale coaching. This, this podcast is, is really primarily focused on wholesale and real estate, of course. Um, but wholesaling is a job 
And yeah. you know, if you're going to replace one job with another, you know, right. it, needs to, it needs to have one of two things. It needs to either need to make more or work less or ideally both, right? And it is a job. <laughs> so the fact that you guys are wholesaling from means to an end to then go acquire the rentals aligns very, very close with, with me and my company and what we do. So we do have the same approach. Uh, we're five-year wholesalers at this point full-time, and we've built a portfolio of about 65 units. Um, right. And we wholesale any, anywhere from you know six to 10 deals a month, depending on the month, sometimes more. Uh, but all the money that we're making from these wholesales isn't ever really kept. It's not like deposited. It's like, hey, let's go put that in another rental property, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're, we, we align very, very uh, similar on that. So that's awesome, guys. So you've been wholesaling for a couple of years. And let's talk about the portfolio. I mean, only a couple years to have a portfolio is amazing. Most people, you know, like for me, when I started, you know, the first couple of years, you know, it was one or two a year. And you guys are hitting the ground just sprinting. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We built a portfolio of 23 units. Um, it was really inside of like 18 months. And our goal awesome. is awesome. to be over 100 units by the end of 2020. That's our goal. We're really looking into multifamily now. So our next big goal is to take down a 50 or 100 unit uh, multifamily apartment building and just keep growing and scaling from there. I love it. So you guys are in the Boston market? Yes. We're in Boston. We're now that's, Boston. An, that's an expensive we're market. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we spent our whole lives in Boston. We moved to North Carolina in 2012. So we're in North Carolina, Boston. We also invest virtually in other markets around the country, um, JV with different investors and stuff. So. Wherever the deal is, we, we're, at, we're there. So we'll close the deal anywhere, especially wholesaling it. I love it. And that's the cool thing about today's you know, technology is that virtual wholesaling is like really taking off and people are starting to do it more and more. So you got, do you live in Boston or do you live in North Carolina? We live in North Carolina. <coughs> but, um, our third deal was actually a virtual wholesale deal. We made $105,000 closing a virtual wholesale deal in Boston. Woo so that is instantly made us cash buyers at that point. At that yeah. point, right. Isn't that amazing how it's just, it's, you're one or two deals away from changing the whole way the business is, you know, can, can work for you. I love that. That is amazing. So. We really you, didn't see that 103,000. That kind we of put it right back in the rentals. In the see, <laughs> that's my mindset too. I love it. We align so similar because I want the passive income, right? Jewelry or right. watch. And we're I like, want streams of money. Right. I don't want the big chunks. I want streams because it's more steady and it allows you the time freedom, which most people don't right. realize. That is what gets you time freedom. Which is what we have. Not making these big chunks because then guess what happens? You said it, Dedrick. You go buy the watch and the car and then you're broke again. But you got this yeah. nice shit, right? Exactly. So it's like, I don't want to have to keep doing this. So let's, let's keep putting it into rentals. So I think that's amazing. Are you guys using the Burr strategy at all? Or how are you going about acquiring? Absolutely. We've used the Burr strategy before. Uh, we've used our private, private money financing, hard money. Yeah, we do a lot of private uh, financing. Yeah, our own cash. So, you know, whatever suits the deal. But again, we, um, we, we ascribe to the philosophy of having multiple tools in your tool belt. You have to. You have to have multiple tools, tools in your tool belt. You have yeah. to give sellers multiple options on how you can purchase their home. You have yeah. to be able to be super flexible and pivot and be open-minded. And that is what separates the people that get in the business and do one or two deals and stop or just maybe even do one or two deals a quarter, right? Versus right. those like me and you that are doing multiple deals and we're doing multiple things at the same time via wholesaling, rehabbing, is because we have the open mind of, okay, whatever the problem is, we're going to tackle it. Yeah. Right? Right. Totally. I love that. You guys align perfectly. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other ventures that you guys are in as well. It's not just real estate. Yeah, so before real estate, again, we both had corporate jobs where we owned a franchise um, that, that we had purchased before we got into real estate. So we're always into building a business. How do we get freedom from corporate America? How do we get financial independence? So we sold that business in 2017 and we took a lot of those funds and invested it in getting educated and learning real estate, learning the business. Um, you wanna talk about some of the other businesses we're in now? Well, here, uh, before, before we do, let's talk about the franchise. I've owned a franchise too. So we, we align on a lot of things. <laughs> Right. Um, I want to learn a little bit about your franchise just quickly and why you sold it, um, because I think that we're similar on that as well. Yeah. So um, it was basically me. because I'm the visionary. So I was coming to my husband. I said, listen, we need to 
you know, corporate is great, but we need to start, you know, we've both been entrepreneurs our entire life. So I said, hey, listen, I, I just started looking up different franchises. Um, and I was, I sent this one particular one to him and it was on animal rides. You ever seen, go to the mall and you see those scooters um, that look like little furry animals that people can ride around the mall. Yeah, yeah. So that was the idea. And I sent it to him. He was like, no. Uh, was like, that's not a real business. That's you not a real money. business. <laughs> money. So I said, okay. I went back to the drawing board and I found the financials on one. And it just so happened the one that I find the financials on, you know, I tell people, Google, you can find anything. Um, I contacted the guy who owned um, the business. Just so happened he was an absentee landlord. Yeah, like 11 locations in four states. He yep. was an absentee owner and was motivated to sell. Just like this, really. is a bit, this isn't even a, you're not even trying to locate a motivated seller. Hold on. You're, you're trying to yeah. contact a franchise or. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> so then okay. I, I saw the financials and I was like, wow, this thing actually makes money and it's profitable. So I got into negotiation. So I'm the integrator. She's the visionary in our partnership. And I started talking to him and he originally wanted $80,000 to sell these two locations in North Carolina because he lived in Mississippi. So he was just done absentee and um, negotiated down to 43,000 uh, cash. So I didn't have the 43,000. So what I did is I borrowed the money from my 401k. So set up a solo 401k, borrowed the money when we bought the franchise. Again, we're both still working corporate jobs and we bought this franchise. So we hired someone 10 bucks an hour. They worked the kiosk and we made it, you know, a good five to 10,000 a month. Um, passive income from that business. And we rode it, I think we got to what, three locations in two different states and about 300,000 in annual revenues. But then my wife being a visionary is like, all right, this trend I think is gonna start on a downward trend, so we need to sell. So after a year and a half, we sold for double what we paid for it. And again, we took that money and then we started getting into the real estate from there. Wow, that is awesome. So you guys, um, when you, did you buy the business from the franchise or, or did you sign a franchise agreement? Uh, it wasn't a traditional, we bought yeah. two of his locations. So we bought the locations in North Carolina. Okay. So he was, he was a franchisee then. Yeah. Okay. So you guys bought over his, his, his rights essentially then. Exactly. Yeah. What was the franchise fee a week or a month? How did that work? Well, my husband negotiated so that when we bought it, there was no franchise fee or anything. We literally took it completely over from him. Yeah, there wasn't any royalties. No royalties. Going. He didn't want anything. What? Uh, That's he awesome. Created everything. He yeah. created the brand, the logo, all of we that. Took we took it over and then we kind of scaled it because um, the mall was ready. The malls were ready to kick him out because they were having too many problems with his employees and the kiosk not being open. And I tell people a lot of times it's really different working in a mall. Um, than it would be, you know, working at a storefront or things. You have a lot of rules and regulations, and there's a lot of backdooring when it comes to working in a mall. So you got to know what you're doing. Um, and we found out really quick. The good thing is that me and my husband were not new to business, so a lot of that shit didn't get over. They didn't get over on us. Right. But, but of course, we met other individuals who worked in it who was like, "Oh my God, wait! I paid twenty thousand deposit." We're like, what? Right. <laughs> Just to see them all. So um, a lot of it, you know, was due to his really, really great negotiating up front with him. And the mall was kind of glad we took over at that point. So when I said, listen, let's get out um, and let's sell, it was at a point where we had probably had 20 malls who were asking us if we would come into theirs. No way. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so the whole reason that I asked though about the about the franchise was I paid a franchise fee, uh, like a royalty, right? Every yeah. week, yeah. essentially. And it was six, I was a sandwich shop in Lincoln, Nebraska. I don't live in Nebraska. I live in Missouri, right? So at the time, this is so crazy. And I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too far. But at the time, me and some buddies got together and we're like, let's do this. Let's get 20 of these, right? But we got to start with one. So we got one and, and we were sold on this market. And um, so we opened up this, this place. It was a, a, a restaurant called Picklemans, which is very similar to Potbelly. You guys got Potbellies? Yeah, yeah. Potbelly. Okay, it's like, I, it's basically the same restaurant, right? <laughs> like the, the guy that created it basically took Potbellies and just rebranded it. Same food too, you can't even tell the difference. Um, so we bought one of these things though, but we were paying 6% gross to the franchisor, which, you know, is actually pretty competitive in the franchise space. I think Jimmy John's is nine. Um, 
But anyway, the, the, whole, the whole deal with, with this was, is the, the 6% gross ends up being about 40 to 50% net. So like, oh, wow. look at it this way. Yeah, look at it this way. <clears throat> you bring in a dollar, six cents goes away right away to him of, of, of that entire dollar. But then you got the rent, you got the overhead, you got the insurance, you got the labor, you got the cost of the food. The so, at the, so at the end of the day, the, the business maybe makes 150 grand, but you only get to keep, you know, like 80 of it, 90 of it, right? right. And you're paying 50, 60 grand away. So I, that's why I was curious if you guys had the, the franchise fees or not, and you didn't. So you negotiated that in from the get-go. Yeah, you. but it wasn't as profitable. Again, once we looked at our net net, we were like, you know what? We could be doing it, doing something else and getting a lot bigger profit. And we had always wanted to do real estate. Net net is what matters. I just interviewed Kong the other day. And that was a great episode. You guys know Kong? Yeah. Yeah. Man, he was just like, bigger isn't better. Better is better. Same scenario. It's all about the net profit. He's like, people that are doing, you know, 15, 20 deals a month, he's like, that's great. I'll do one or two and make just as much on those deals. And he's like, and I'll work 15 to 20 times less hard. So it's a, it's a, I love that philosophy. What are your net margins? I hear people like, oh, I sell on Amazon. I make 100 grand a month. But if your margin is 3%. If you only made 2,000 2, bucks, right? It's like, it's a lot of work. I love it. So, hey, guys, sorry to take it down the, 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 the sidetrack there with the franchise. But I just love talking about that type of stuff. Um, let's get back to the other businesses that you guys are in other than real estate now. That was something that in the past you sold. I love that you saw the trend of, you know, the malls themselves kind of, you know, depleting in, in, you know, social value. So you moved on and uh, what are you up to now? <clears throat> um, so right now we're actually just running some of the, we're still in our real estate business. So we kind of created multiple streams of revenue within that business. So we still, we have our own property management company <clears throat> that I run. We also have a property preservation company um that we run which is also a great source of leads for us um we have our education education company, company. short-term rental we have our short-term rental <laughs> we have like company. eight different entities i was just looking at the list yesterday nice. <laughs> so we also strategically buy um so we do buy single families as well as multi-families um strategically though so we put them in areas where you know they, they're great as rentals, but they're better as short-term um, rentals. So well, how many, we, you guys do have some Airbnbs and whatnot? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And I got one. I have 65 rental properties. So 64 long-term leases right now. And then I have one Airbnb and I'm debating on, you know, doing more of them or not. How many of you, you all have? Yeah. So we have two. And we have three that we're converting now. So we are waiting for... You'll be to five the, soon. Right. So we have three that we're waiting for the tenants' leases to be up um, for us to start the work on. Remodel so they start the whole remodel process. <clears throat> and they're literally in the middle of like uh, the huge college campus of like three major universities. They're all within minutes of a downtown area. So they were like perfect. That's the only reason why I wanted them so bad because I knew they would be great for short-term rental. So we're in the process of converting them now um, as well. Anything else? Um, we're actually looking for um, our next big multifamily. Like you said, we're looking for like a 50, 100 unit. Um, doesn't matter where it is. So if anyone has any, um, that's a good deal. Don't send us anything on the market because it will get deleted. So but, you don't care about the, about the city? No. Um, Anywhere in the continental U.S.? Let me rephrase that because I don't want somebody to send me something in Podunk, Mississippi. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we wanted to be out, if not in a major city, on the outskirts of one. Um, Got it. And we are in the process of looking, well, I'm looking for our next franchise um, as well. So that's what I'm in the midst of doing. Um, currently. You guys are busy and you got two kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are busy i love it though i love right. it i like that you guys are just down to take massive action you know that's Absolutely. what separates the people that have success in anything you know it doesn't even have to be real estate necessarily 
just always be, you know, trying to educate yourself and just take the next step towards the goal, you know, having a, a good solid plan. You guys, you, we align very, very um, close on those, on those topics right there. So what's next? What's next? Um, what's next? Uh, development um, is next. So we bought a ton of land um, and now we're actually, um, I am speaking with uh, zoning and things of that nature getting um, well, a lot of our property, our land is already zoned for multifamily. So um, I'm in the process of starting that whole thing and um, getting permits and all that crap that comes along with it. But development, we want to start right after, you know, coronavirus is over. Um, we want to start with a multifamily in the back of one of our, uh, another property we own. We're going to start there before we start with the bigger land that we have. So I think that's next for us. Um, yeah, yeah. Of course, real estate is always the foundation. Yep. I mean, it's foundational. We'll never stop doing real estate. Um, but again, it gives you the capital and that you know that net worth base to go and branch out into other things as well. I love it, guys. I love their their social media, their Instagram. Go check them out. Be Polite Properties. B e p o l i t e p r o p e r t i e s. Um, be polite. Polite. I always <laughs> screw shit up, guys. I'm sorry. Hey, what's the websites that you guys have? You got Super uh, or Super Social. Yeah, if they go to our Super Social on um, Instagram. It has all of our resources and links to all of our stuff we have going on. Our YouTube page, our private Facebook group, our Driving for Dollars program. So all that is on Super Social. Let's talk about the Driving for Dollars program. What's that all about? Driving for dollars, man, um, how it really came about is, you know, we, the foundation of most of our deals is found through driving for dollars, right? Driving around, finding these distressed properties, sending them a postcard and, you know, getting the deal that way. And people kept asking us as we were sharing our journey on social media, how are you doing this? How are you finding these houses with 50 cents on the dollar? You know, how are you doing it? And we were like, man, we didn't have time to mentor and personally help everyone one-on-one. -on -one. So around this time last year, we were like, we need to create a course because we just don't have the time to answer all these questions every single day, which we were doing. And we created the course. Uh, we launched it last year, basically showing people how to create, you know, close five to 10 deals a month, driving for dollars and building a team of deal finders around the country. And it's done incredibly well. We have, you know, over 150 students now. Uh, we've created a community among that. So it's, it's been great. Man, that is awesome. That is amazing, guys. Keep it up. You're crushing it. I Thank love you. it. So what's the yeah. main website? Uh, drivingfordollarscourse.com. Drivingfordollarscourse.com. Check it out, guys, if you want more information. Yeah, we'll send you links to put in the show notes, you know, on YouTube. Yeah, send them over. All your guys' details and all that good stuff. We'll stick it in there. Guys, if you're listening or you're watching this episode, check out the show notes. By the time this publishes, we'll have that in there. Um, so we talked about what's next. And let's talk a little bit more about the real estate business. So you guys understand that wholesaling is a job. It's a means to an end. You're doing it for the passive income. Um, you're looking for the 50 to the hundred unit type of building. Are you still going to be focused as well on single families and, and some smaller multis too? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Single family and multi that, you know, smaller multi, that's the bread and butter, you that's know, the we bread and butter. Do, totally we agree. And then obviously you got a couple more Airbnbs coming on. Um, I want to ask a question real quick about that topic. Has the current situation with COVID-19 um, affected any decision-making processes for future Airbnbs? It has. So one of the things we, we don't do is we don't speculate and we don't do the rental arbitrage thing, which is, you know, getting a proper, renting a property that's, you know, already. At I don't either. I don't. Yeah, I totally, rent, totally get that. People, you know, some people have a lot of success with that. And I think it really depends right. on the market that you're in. Yeah, yeah. You know, it really does. I mean, in certain markets, you may have a three to five X uh, return on yeah. that arbitrage, but in other markets, it may be one to one or one and a half to one. And it's, it's like, that's a lot of work and risk. It's risk. It's risk. So, right. Totally. Agree. So every, every one of our properties, it has to work as a standalone standard rental, right? 12 month lease. It has to cash flow, right? We're not going off. Oh, well, Airbnb will make two or three X. No, that's specu speculating and that'll get you crushed. So once it works as a regular rental, we look at the market and we're in North Carolina, so there's not as much competition in the town we're in. 
So our Airbnb we have here in the Greensboro area is crushing it because there's just not a lot of competition. Um, so that's kind of how we look at it. We look at the market, we underwrite it conservatively, and then we go from there. So what, what are the metrics for the rentals? Let's say we're talking about a single family or a small multi. Whenever you guys are looking to acquire, um, what, what, what minimum metrics? So mine personally is 20,000 equity, uh, $275 a month cash flow, um, and $0 of my own money. That's typically where I like to be in a deal. Now, if it's, you know, not in that and it's close, we'll make it work, but we burr everything that we do. So we have a private lender that lends us purchase plus rehab multiple, you know, about eight of them actually. Nice. Um, and then we go purchase, we rehab, we rent, you know, standard birth strategy. Then we refinance it with a, a loan based on the appraisal and not our cost at 75 to 80% pay them back. And yeah. I've done about 45 of them in the last 18 months. Um, wow. So that's, that's kind of my strategy, but I was just curious on, how would the metrics look for you guys when you're acquiring rentals? And then you had mentioned, you know, hard money, private money. Uh, let's hear the, your guys' approach. Just curious. Yeah, it's pretty much the, the same, right? Because you can scale indefinitely there. You're not using your own cash, right? So if you got 200 grand and you buy two houses for 100 grand each, you're tapped out. When you got that private money resource and you're buying it at 60 cents on a dollar, you're putting in, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 renovations and then you're renting it and refinancing it. You can just continue to scale. That's how you've been able to scale so quickly. And, and same with us. So very, very simple. simple. So yeah, you guys are we're, we're doing the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so ours is do you guys have similar metrics? Twenty k, two seventy five to three hundred a month in, in cash flow, or how do you how do you look at the property and, and say, hey, this will make a good um, you know property for us? Yeah. So yeah. with Dunder Keys, typically did not want to come out of our pocket. Zero dollars out of pocket. Um, depending on if we're doing it here or in the neighboring, so like in the town we live in, or Greensboro, um, the numbers will change on how much rent we would want each sure. month. Sure, do you guys go off a of 1% or 2% type of rule, or? Yeah, 1% is too thin for us. We go for, you know, 1.5, 2%. I'm with you. Because 1%, one thing goes wrong and you're, you're, you're paying out of yeah, pocket. Yeah, 1% is, so the way I look at it is minimum. Like if it doesn't meet the 1% rule, I don't even want it. And I basically make offers based on the 1% rule more often than the MAO formula. I'll literally yeah. just, you know, it, you got to use them together, of course, right? But, but I'll yeah. literally just be like, hey, you know, it, this is bringing in how much? Cool. You know, here's what I need to be, be at. This number times 70% minus 10, 15 grand, just minimum, right? Just yeah. very, very simple. Our portfolio is probably averaging 1.3 to 1.4. I think that's kind of where we're at. So very similar, but you guys have, um, so, so I guess the, the 1% or whatever the percent rule would vary though, if you're in multiple markets, I'm just in St. Louis, right? Christina's right down the street from me. I sell her deals all the time. I know you guys, I know you guys are friends with Christina here. Um, yep. But, but basically though, we're doing it very, very close. Whereas you guys are doing it in a couple of different multiple markets, right? Right. Yeah, remote. So we're in um, North Carolina, but we close deals in Durham, which is 30 minutes away, Greensboro, Charlotte. Um, again, the power of data, the power of computers. I'm a big data guy. Uh, I believe in God we trust for all other, others to bring data. <laughs> as long as I got the information on the comps and everything, I, you know, I can underwrite and close a deal anywhere in the U.S. Man, I think that's amazing. And PropStream helps with that, too, just because it's just national. Right. PropStream, very powerful. We use that. Love it. So, so let's talk a little bit before we wrap up here, guys, about the uh, marketing. We, we, we've gone, uh, you know, almost 40 minutes and we haven't even mentioned, <coughs> which is crazy because that's the business that that's we're the in. That's the, that's, business. that's the business that we're in. And I tell all my students, you know, whenever we, they come on board, I say, all right, this is going to be the hardest part of this entire program, right? It's going to take you 30 seconds, but you have to understand that you are not a real estate investor. You're right. going to become an expert marketer, right? Once you that, get really good at marketing, you can be any kind of investor you want, but yeah. none of, none of it matters if you can't find a seller that's motivated, nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? So you had mentioned deal machine. Are you doing anything else? Absolutely. Yeah. So we the do marketing maven. Here. Um, I handle a little marketing for our businesses. 
and we do, of course, uh, drawing for dollars using um, Deal Machine. We also do ringless voicemail um, through REI Rail, um, mm -hmm. which crush it in that as well. Um, we do some light text messaging um, as well. Cold calling. We do cold calling really heavy. So we kind of have a conveyor belt of how our leads go through it and how our um, how we approach our um, marketing starting off with do you do any mail absolutely okay yeah. cool so you guys are doing you're doing it all you're doing all the all the things yeah because what we realized david is that individual sellers are going to respond to different forms 100 percent. how they communicate right a 70 year old yeah. woman is less likely to text you back but she'll she'll check her mail she probably still absolutely. reads her mail she might she might even mail you back before she calls you right exactly. right so, right. so Hit them with different forms of marketing to increase your chances of a response. So we do the exact same thing. I don't have a, you know, there's no magic bullet. That's another thing I tell the students, you know, there is no magic bullet, right? Here's the thing about marketing. All of it works if you do enough of it, there right? You go. So if you go hang 30 bandit signs, and you don't get a deal. Well, you know, sorry, right? Go, go hang 300 of them. You're going to exactly. get one. Right. And it's the same thing with all these other things. So I think it's awesome. So direct mail, uh, cold calling, cold texting, um, RVMs, course yeah. deal machine, which is awesome just to locate those leads. Social media. Social media. Social media. Yeah. I mean, again, you guys have been in the business a couple of years now. The, the percentage of your referrals is, is going up and up and up. So when I first started, you know, zero, there was no referrals. Right. right? But now that I've been in the business full time, five going on six years, I'd say maybe 20 to 30% of the deals are referrals. So give me five more years and it's going to be half. You know, yeah, that is how deal. awesome the power of networking is. Exactly. Absolutely. And I tell people, even our very first deal was found on Facebook Marketplace. For awesome. sale by owner. For sale by owner. So I tell people, you know, when it comes to us in marketing, I tell my husband, if we're driving in our, one of our areas here, and a sign goes up from a realtor house for sale. I get upset because I'm like, how did that? How did we miss that? Um, and that's just me and how I'm. If a house is sold in our town. We're upset. Right. Why didn't we get On that? Market, yeah. It's like you know, I market to the entire our entire county. Are you guys doing um, most virtual? Like most of it virtually, or are you doing it like hands on? I guess I guess I'm, that, that's a tough question to ask because you're all over. Um, I guess the, let, let, let me rephrase. Are you or somebody on your team running appointments? Yes. Okay. Me too. I prefer, I, I like them. running appointments and I'm also only marketing in my neighborhood, right? Or like, you know, 20, 30 minute drive. Right. But yeah. I like going on the appointments um, or sending somebody from my team. That's actually like my favorite part. I don't like answering. The phone. I, don't like phone. Yeah. I don't like following up, but I have a team of people that do all those things all day long. Yeah. Right. My favorite thing about the business is literally like going out, meeting people, walking through cool houses, crazy houses, nice houses, gross houses, just doing that, right? It's just fun. I just know him. I love it. I'm like, yeah. why don't you send me acquisitions manager? No, no, I want to go. I like I being go. belly to belly like, with the owner. Me Those too. Cool. And I'm not even, here's the thing. I'm not even the main acquisitions guy. I have a guy for that. But right. I'm just like, hey, if you have a double booking, let me go on that other appointment. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I just want to go look at some houses, right? It's it's yeah, awesome. We we are so similar. So the reason I ask is because some people um are you know, to me, that's what you have to remove to be to go like virtual and be successful at it. You have to remove the appointment, right? Yep. You have to rely one hundred percent on photos and videos from the seller, but then even more than that, the repairs from the buyers. And that's yeah. a, that's a mindset thing. Like, all right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to start marketing this knowing that I don't know and then get feedback and then tweak as I go. And that's something that I really admire about those who do a lot of virtual because I don't do much virtual. I mean, you know, a oh, little, yeah. little bit here and there, but it's really like, Hey, you know, are you motivated? Do you live within 20 minutes of where I, where I live? I'll come see your house. Otherwise, probably not even interested, you know? So even for our virtual and how we do it is because where we're doing it is North Carolina, where I actively market. So meaning I'm 
I either have people, I'm either sending mailers or we're cold calling or hitting them with a ringless voicemail is two markets. That's Boston um, or Suffolk County in Massachusetts and North Carolina. And that's from Charlotte all the way through to Raleigh. Um, and those are the places that we actively market to. So how we do it with our virtual and even Charlotte, Charlotte's two hours away from us. Um, but we have an acquisitions guy in the Charlotte market. We have an acquisitions guy. Right. So you have, you have the boots on the ground there, which Absolutely. basically means you're there. You have an office essentially, exactly. you know? Cool. So cool. what I've learned to do for scaling for us, because we were literally paying acquisitions, you know, there's $10,000 checks just because they went and looked at the property, not went inside the property, but went to the house. <laughs> we learned. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So, so that's. I'm glad that we're talking about this. You guys are filled with gold nuggets. This is great. So, did you move to more of a per property or even hourly? Absolutely. So, how we do it now is Dedrick locks everything up on the phone, and all if it's we virtual. If, it's, if it's virtual, I can't drive to it. Yeah. If right, he right. can't drive to it, all negotiations is done through him on the phone. If we need someone to go and take pictures, then we're paying you. For that, if we need you to go and put a um, contract for deed, list pending or something on the property and go to the courthouse, then we'll pay 100 you bucks. for right. that. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the way to do it, guys. Set the fixed fee absolutely. or even go hourly. I, yeah. I learned that the hard way too. And, you know, I'm sure oh, you guys did, did, right? Where it's like, yeah. Yeah. they're not doing you know, that for 10, 30, sometimes, yeah. sometimes 50% of the deal that you did nothing on. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to rather just, I'd rather just spend the hundred or $200 yeah. five or even 10 times on deals that I don't close because it's going to be a lower amount than that one that I do for 30 grand and I got to pay you 10, you know? Exactly. Yeah, here's a sample kind of virtual deal I recently did. So met with a seller probably about three weeks ago. He was motivated, it was a probate situation. I spent an hour at the house with him, got the property in the contract, got a lockbox on it that same day, blasted it out to my cash buyers. Within three days, I had like five cash buyers who wanted to see it. Are you so, REI Black Book? Yeah, we, we, we use that. I'm at your website now. It looks similar to mine. I, was, I love REI Black Book. I've been with them since 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so I, yeah. you know, I, I got the got a lockbox on it. I had a bunch of buyers interested. So I'm like, should I go and show these guys? It was vacant. You know, should I go? And I'm like, why waste my time going to meet these cash buyers? I said, if you're interested, here's a lockbox code. Go, go let yourself in. Five guys went and looked at it. Three of them made me offers. Within a few days, they accepted an offer for nine grand. And that was it. I spent like, three hours on that whole deal. And I only saw the property once. And I'm like, if every deal went like this, like- Simple, not easy. <laughs> right. right, it wasn't right? easy, it was simple. It, 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 you, that one was easy because we're just talking about one, but, you're, but really the big picture is, is you looked at 15. Right. And that's, why, and that's why it's not easy, but it's so exactly. simple though. You just gotta exactly. find that motivated one. Motivated. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You know, like that's the coaching program. Like yeah. learn how to market. Get in front of that motivated one. 90 the deal. Business Boom, is right? Sellers. Yeah. That's not in, 5% of the business. 5% real estate. We exactly. do a lot of um, wholesaling as well. And um, we tell people a lot of times when you're doing wholesale deals, which is one of the niches that we love to do, um, of course you need capital whether it's your money or a private now, investor. I'm glad we're talking about this. I want to talk about wholesaling and some creative financing. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I got to no. ask really quick while it's on top of my mind. In your, in your markets, because you're in multiple, can you list owner by contract? People tell us that all the time, but we don't, we haven't done it. You know? The reason I ask is you said you had to have capital and I want to not disagree, but I just want to bring that to light because we list owner by contract all the time. And yeah. we don't even own it. We just get an option agreement on it. Not, not a listing agreement, an option. And then we'll tell, and in the option, it says we have the right to list it and we'll throw it up on the market. And if we don't sell it, then we don't buy it. And if we do, we just exercise the option. Right, so we've had individuals tell us yes, no. We went and checked with the state. And of course they're saying no. We've checked with, we have quite a few brokers that are friends of ours who, um, some of them are saying, no, you can't. Some it's are saying area. it's a way to do it. So that's why I asked. There's, a, there's an option in our MLS. There's a box like you, that you check, like, you know, for sale, yeah, for lease, 
owner by contract. You can check that box. Yep. Yeah. And then it's like a, it's like, you know, it's basically, you know, they want you to list that way. Let me ask you this. Does do the owner ever, ever get upset when they No, because we will never list a house. So again, this is what the mo where the motivation comes in. We will never list a house um, of one that we tell them we're buying it. We're very transparent, right? We are here to solve a problem, not to buy a house. What's the underlying issue? Okay, well, the house can help get to that issue, right? So we're gonna buy it or we're gonna go find a partner to buy it. And when we go find a partner to buy it that's in the contract and it's bold, we're gonna go find a partner via any means necessary. And then in parentheses, listing on the MLS, emailing out to our list. Like, you know, last year we bought 90, I forget, eight houses. The year before we bought 92. And I didn't need any of them. I didn't need any, zero, right? But I want to buy those houses if I can get a good deal. So I tell that to the, to the sellers, I'm super transparent. And I also say, you know, how could one individual buy 98 houses? Because he has a lot of partners, 98 yeah. of them, right? Yeah. So give me some time to find a partner and I can solve your problem. The house isn't the problem. The problem is the relocation or the death or the divorce or the disease. Yeah. There you right? go. That's the problem. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm like, I'm so grateful for your time. Oh, you're um, you guys are filled with gold nuggets. We're going to have to bring you back on the show here in a couple months to get an update. Um, how many rentals are you at now? We're at 23 rentals now. 23. You're looking for 50 to 100 units. I mean, you're going you're gonna to yes. be blowing this out the water. You guys got the hustle, the drive, and more importantly than any of that, the mindset. You know, it's simple, not easy. I love it. Any parting words for the viewers and the, uh, and the listeners today? Uh, we appreciate you having us. My parting words is just uh, don't be afraid to fail. Fail forward. We mess up every day. Again, this, isn't, this business isn't easy. It's simple. But um, make sure you learn from your mistakes and keep, keep moving forward. Simple, not easy. Before we wrap up, how do, we, how do we get in touch with you guys? All things be polite. Be polite on uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. Be polite. And, not polite. Polite. <laughs> <laughs> Polite. Yeah, we look forward to connecting with you guys. I love it. Guys, go check them out. All things polite on all the platforms. These guys are rocking it. You need to know who they are. Thanks, Dave. I love it. Thanks, guys. Signing off. Until next time, see you then. <laughs>